Welcome in guys and welcome to one of my hero previews. Today I'm going to be going over the new limited unit coming out, Summertime Isaria. Now she's supposed to come out about a week after this video is released and she is going to be, as you can see on your screen soon, a Fire Ranger. Now she was kind of predicted to be a Fire Ranger because her base unit or RGB unit is Earth and then the collab units which were released um, with the ReZero collab are all Ice besides Ram, which is also Earth, so yeah, we need more fire units um, in recent times, so they decided to release Summertime Isaria as a Fire Ranger. Now, you will see at first glance that one of her imprints is going to be attack percentage. That is signaling to me that she will be some kind of damage dealer. Now, her model and animations are sick. I really recommend checking them out in this video. I'm gonna skip ahead to the hero introduction, so if you wanna see her model and animations, check it out in the Epic 7 channel on YouTube, and you can see this video for yourself. Now, we're going to look at her stats right here at the Hero Introduction page. You'll see, like I said, she's a Fire Ranger. She's Capricorn, so you can get ready on your Capricorn Catalyst if you want to promote her right away and awaken her right away and skill enhance. And you can see for stats, her base attack is pretty high. Her health is pretty decent for a Ranger. Her speed, speed is pretty um, on the high end as well. Defense is okay. Her crit chance, crit damage are unaffected. And you'll see her effectiveness is pretty high as well with an imprint concentration of effectiveness. So this signals to me she's going to be some kind of AoE debuffing with effectiveness, you know, like high damage dealer, kind of like Carrot, um, especially because of the stat line. You can build her a little bit tankier if you want, and her being a ranger really helps out, um, even though she might not be the tankiest unit, because you can run her on Guiding Light if you really needed her to be more um, t sustainable and be able to survive for longer. Now let's jump into her skills, guys. You'll see right here, S2. Um, it is a passive skill. There are three parts to it. So the first part is going to be that your first soul burn that you use, which is going to be on her S1, by the way, will not cost you any souls. This is really nice because it makes you so you don't really need to rely on a mage holding Tagahel's Ancient Book to be able to soul burn if her soul burn is really good. And also, what her S2 does is it makes it so that she cannot crit, similar to Senya, but her attack will be increased by 30% at max mola. So that means you don't want to build any crit rate or crit damage on her. You just go full attack for damage stat and you know other stats can go into health, defense, speed, effectiveness, whatever you want. Her third part of her passive is going to be probably one of the most broken one parts of the passive. Um, you'll see that is when an ally, except for herself, Seaside Osiria, uses an AoE attack, you'll activate Suppress, which can only be activated once every three turns. So what is Suppress? It says down below, it is a CR push by 15%, which is pretty nice. Um, basically, you can use her kind of as like a CR pusher in like cleave teams, or if you have an opening like Bazaar and Basarkos, um, she'll push her team up and herself up to be able to take turns faster. And also, she'll plant a bomb on two random enemies for two turns. So bomb is not a really common debuff. It's only really on ML Leo or Roaming Warrior Leo. And he's pretty bad, so people have not really seen bomb too much. But Smilegate said that they're planning to change it and buff it. Um, it'll kind of work like burn with like added effects. So be prepared for this bomb debuff to be insanely bomb <laughs> and good. So yeah, that's her S2. Um, I think they have like a preview it, of it here. So yeah, it's actually Basar, like I said. So Basar is on our team. Basar opens. Um, so what that does is it strips everyone, and then keep in mind her S2 is going to activate, right? Because Prasar's S3 is AoE. So it'll CR push her team here, and then the bombs lands on the enemy units. So you'll see the bomb landed on Politus, and I think, is that FCC that got it? No, it is Landy. Okay, so yeah. So that was her S2, her S2 in, fa in uh, play. S3 from Basar procs it with a CR push, and then you land the bombs. And then the other two parts are kind of like super pa like passive, so you don't really notice it. You'll see it ties in with her S1 though, um, so the soul burn effect is here. So basically, um, this soul burn is free the first time you use it um, on Summertime Assyria, so you don't have to worry about using souls unless you want to use it more than once, or soul burn it more than once. So yeah, what it does, it is a 60% chance to dispel two buffs, it goes up to 75% at max mola, and it's really nice because the soul burn effect is an extra turn. So the extra turn is really nice because you S2, to push yourself up and then your passive procs and you can S1 to strip someone that didn't get stripped by like the Bizarre. If you're using like a Briar Witch Asaria with her and there's a unit that didn't get stripped and resisted, you can actually try to strip with her S1 with the Soul Burn and then be able to S3 on Summertime Asaria right after with the extra turn. Now keep in mind this is a 2 buff strip or dispel. So this is like actually insane because most S1s will only dispel 1 buff instead of 2. So yeah, this makes it really powerful in PvP because you can strip like FCC Barrier and Immunity with one skill in her basic skill, her S1. That's actually insane. In PvE, this has a lot of value for Azamanac 13, has a lot of value for Hell Queen, any boss you need a lot of stripping on. 
especially for Hell Queen if you newer players are struggling. Summertime Hysteria can basically solo, strip, or dispel the boss's greater attack and greater defense buff for you because their S1 is a basic skill and it will strip two buffs, not one like Aeros or some other um, like Bologna as well. So yeah, very cool. Um, I don't think maybe it has a preview. Uh, yeah, it's just a basic attack. Um, you'll see that there's a bomb effect that landed after S1. This is actually not from her S1. It's from the artifact she's holding, which affects her S1. So yeah, it doesn't, just a basic attack. Um, it shows the soul burn here. She got an extra turn. Didn't use any souls at least if you, well, you can't really see because the text is there. Thanks, Smilegate. But yeah, it didn't use any souls the first time. The second time, it did. So yeah, her S3 is going to be Sword of Flowers. It is an AoE attack that decreases attack similar to Briar, which is area. And then it'll give you a speed buff for two turns. Now, the best part about this ability is that it detonates bombs inflicted on enemies, similar to how Carrot's S3 works. So yeah, this makes it so bombs are a lot more useful in Epic 7 because prior, they didn't really have any ways to detonate really, and they weren't that great. You had to wait for them to time out. But now with Summertime Assyria, you have a way to detonate them instantly. Kind of like how Carrot made burns very, very strong as well. So this ability is insane because, think about it, Summertime Assyria has an ally use an AoE attack. Her S2 procs, right? Her bombs land, and then she cuts with her S2 CR push, and then she can either S1 to try to strip someone again or soften someone up, and then she S3s to detonate all the bombs and do a lot of damage like Carrot does, right? So yeah, I think this will be pretty insane. The cooldown is pretty short as well. As you can see, it is a three-turn cooldown, and since her S1 Soul Burn is a extra turn, you can actually cycle this super fast. You can get this up in like two or even one turn cycle if you have enough souls from Taga Hell Book Holders. So yeah, I think this will be crazy. Um, let's see it in action. I think they have a preview of it of the S3 as well. So yeah, animation is sick, um, as you can see. And that's the basic, that's the skill landing. So you, you see it does 3k, 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 and about 5k to landy. And let's see the detonate damage. Okay, that is insane. FCC took 23k, landy takes 13k. Uh, I don't know how much Politis took. Oh, only 1.8k for some reason. And then you'll see Maid took more than half health as well. That is insane damage. That's like carrot level of damage. But you also have the CR pushing on your team. You have, you have the attack down the UF. That's pretty insane, in my opinion. I think just because, just looking at that, I'm just like, wow, that looks pretty freaking busted, right? Um, I think that just shows how much damage she's able of putting out. And her turn cycling makes it really scary. Because she can do that S3 like, what, two or three times a fight? Because the cooldown's only three turns when you mull it? That's just insane. So yeah, that's... Her skills, let's get into her artifact real quick. So her artifact is a ranger exclusive 5 star artifact named Star of the Deep Sea. Basically it is going to be whenever you don't crit with your S1, you're going to have up to 100% chance if you max limit break it to plant a bomb on the target for 2 turns. Now obviously this works really well with Summertime Asteria's kit because her kit is all around you know detonating the bombs. Um, I think it'll only be really used on Summertime Asteria though because this only works on basic skills. So you really only want to put it on units that really, really use bombs very well, which is going to be Summertime Hysteria only at present time. Now, if this was AoE and worked on AoE, um, it would probably be very, very strong on SSB because you bat back, you know, and then land four bombs, but that would be insanely broken. So I kind of understand why it's only a basic attack. So yeah, I think you pull for this um, if you really plan to use Summertime Hysteria a lot. Um, this looks pretty exclusive to Summertime Hysteria. Maybe Guiding Light will probably be okay as well, but I think this one probably will be better for the offensive option. So yeah, if you plan to use um, Summertime Hysteria, just pull this artifact or buy it. Um, you want to put this on her for sure. It just really synergizes really well with her kit. Yeah, and I would really recommend pulling for both Summertime Hysteria and trying to buy this artifact. I think their kits look insane, or her kit looks insane. And I think she'll shake up the meta a bit. She looks like a very, very strong um, like cutter. And she looks very strong at you know one-shotting tanks, as you saw like Carrot does. She looks really fun to play, so I know for sure I will be pulling her. You guys can wait a few days after release and see um, how, what people think about her after they test her out. Because keep in mind, this is all speculation. She could not, you know, she could be not as good as I think. Um, I'm just kind of hopeful because I've been waiting for her so long, for Summertime Hysteria for so long. So I'm pretty excited. Um, I'm definitely going to pull her and put a showcase out, and you guys can see for yourself if she's strong or not. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my Summertime Hysteria preview, guys. Um, I'm really excited for this unit, guys. I hope you guys are too. And thanks for watching, and I hope you guys love the video, and this video kind of helps you understand what she'll be able to do. Um, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, guys. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate the support you guys are showing me. And I'll be back with another video soon, guys. See ya.